Father, we do give you the praise and give you the glory this morning. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Do all that you want to do this morning. Heal, deliver, set free. You're able to change or rearrange anything that is wrong in our lives. We thank you that your word will not come back void. But it will accomplish what pleases you. It will prosper where it's sent. And so we send the word to everyone listening under the sound of my voice. We command every situation, circumstance to get aligned with God's word. The Bible says those that are hearers and doers of God's word, those are the individuals that will be blessed. And for this we give you the praise and glory. We thank you in advance for all that you will do. And we celebrate you this morning. And we thank you for your goodness and your grace. As we apply the word of God, we thank you for manifestation in each and every one of our lives. Touch us, Father, collectively as well as individually. And for this, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor this morning. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody believe and said, Amen. Amen. And when Sabbath was passed, Mark 16, verse 1, and when, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought had brought were there, had brought sweet spices that they might anoint, they might, that they might come and anoint him. There we go. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall, roll away, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they had looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, and it was, it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white raiment, Garment, and they were affrighted. And they said unto and they said unto them, Be not afraid, you seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall there you shall see him as he has said unto you. And they went out quickly. They fled from the sepulchre and, and they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. You can stop right there. All right. This morning I want to talk to you very briefly. I'm not trying not to be long this morning. Uh, but don't rush me. Amen. <laughs> and so this morning, I want to talk to you about questions that don't even matter. Questions that don't even matter. The Bible tells us that they were going to the sepulchre and they, the tomb that is, and they, they said to each other, they said, who shall roll away the stone? Other words, they were asking questions. The Bible says they were even, the, the, the message translation says they were worried. Who shall roll away the stones? I want to talk to you this morning about, about questions that don't even matter. They were asking questions that didn't even matter. 
You may be in a situation right now and you're, you're asking yourself questions that don't even matter. You're asking yourself the question, how am I going to be healed? How am I, how am I going to make, uh, make this right? How am I going to pay my bills? How, how am I going to take care of this child? How am I going to, how am I going to get a promotion? And I'm, I'm here to talk to you this morning that, that your God has already gone before you and has answered every problem that you ever had, every question that you ever had, and so questions that don't even Matter. The Bible says this. The Bible says, take no thought or don't worry or don't ask questions what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, or what you're going to put on. The Bible says, because, because your father already knoweth that you have what need of these things. Now, as we come into this, 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 this book this morning, it is Mark's gospel. Really, it is the dictation of Peter. Peter is the one telling Mark what to write. Now we, we, we looked at this all last week and when we stopped last week, we were Sunday. Amen. You remember that? We were Sunday. The, the triumphant entry. We were Sunday. Amen. But a lot has happened between that Sunday and this Sunday. Yeah. Because the Bible tells us that this Sunday, early in the morning, when, when, when Mary Magdalene and, and all the women went to the tomb, the Bible says when they got there and opened and they were worried about how they were going to look into the tomb, uh, the Bible says when they got there that Jesus was already risen. He was not there anymore. He had already risen from the grave. And the Bible says, the angel says, why is sick you and living among the dead? Are you following me this morning? Yes. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, has risen from the grave. And so we shout, yes. hallelujah, thank you, Lord, because he's the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. Somebody give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now, we know from Scripture that he's not the only one that has risen from the dead. There are many people that rose from the dead. But the difference between his rising is that nobody rose him from the dead. Are you following me? I said nobody rose him from the dead. Yeah, yeah. The Bible tells us in, 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 in second, in, 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 actually in First Kings chapter seventeen, it talks about the 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 the, the, the Shunammite, the the the, the, the Zerophite widow, the Zerophite widow first. First Kings chapter seventeen, and how Elijah raised that little boy back back from the dead. Amen. The second time we see the red raising from the dead is in Second Second Kings chapter four, and, and the Bible tells us Elisha Elisha raised the the, the Shunammite woman's child from the grave. The, the, the third time we see raising from the dead is it, it, when the Bible tells us that a man was thrown into the grave where Elisha was. Elisha had been dead, and this man was also dead. But and they threw him into the grave of Elijah of Elisha. And as soon as the, the body the, the body hit Elisha's bones, the Bible says his body jacked back to life. Amen. Are you following me now? Yes. The, the first time we see rising from the dead in, in, in the New Testament is it, it, when the Bible says in Luke chapter 17 verse 11 how Jesus was passing by and he touches the, the, the widow's son from Nain. You remember that? Yes. He touches her as she, he touches him as he was pronounced dead and the widow was crying and the Bible says that Jesus touched that boy and he stood up and stop the prof uh, pro pro profession or uh, possession of, 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 the, of the funeral service. The next time we see rising from the dead is in, in lieu of Jairus, Jairus' daughter. In Mark chapter 5, the Bible says in Mark chapter 5, Jairus' daughter was 12 years old and she was dead. Jairus goes to find Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus says, I will come and heal her. He comes into the house and the Bible says that there was a lot of commotion in the house. He tells the people that she is not dead, but she's asleep. Scripture says that they laughed him to scorn. Yeah. And the Bible says he got a fit and he put them all out. He goes into the bedroom, into the room where him, him and John and James were and Peter and, and the mother and father. And the Bible says he looked at that girl and speaks to her and says, Daughter, I say unto you, I the resurrection and the life say unto you, Daughter, get up. 
uh, and the Bible says she that was dead told on opened her eyes looked at the, the mother and father and said feed her and let her go the next time we see rising from the dead is in John 11 John 11 it is a dramatic event there's a man called there's a man called uh, Lazarus. Lazarus happens to be the brother of, of Mary and Martha. Lazarus has been dead almost four days, and the Bible says by now he is thinking. The Bible says that he comes to the place, and when they told him about Lazarus, he said he says he says Lazarus dead, Lazarus is is asleep and he's not dead. They said, well, uh, okay, if he's asleep, it's good. Now this is the disciples now. Uh, he says, okay, let me just tell you plainly, Lazarus is dead, but I'm glad that I was not there. I used, there's something that God's going to allow you to walk through, that he's not going to go, he's not, he's not going to go in and try to take you from going through it, but he's going to allow you to walk through it to see his glory. Yeah. I said it again. Yeah. There's something that God is not going to deliver you from, he's going to allow you to walk through those things, so when you get on the other side, you will see more of his glory. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. He says, Lazarus was dead, was dead for days. Dead for days. Somebody said dead for days. Dead he for was days. dead for days. He was dead for this. And the Bible says this. Jesus, as he comes to the scene, to, to Bethany, uh, uh, Mary, Mary and Martha were there, they were there, and they were, they were obviously in, they were in, they were in bereavement, they were grieving. Mary comes to Jesus and he says, she says, she says, she says, Master, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. Yeah. He speaks to Mary and says, she says, Mary, she says, Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. Oh, yes, Lord. Are you following me this morning? Then he says to Mary, he says, Mary, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. The glory of God, if you will believe. The Bible says this, the Bible says this. It says, it says Mary, uh, uh, Mary then walked away and goes to get Martha. Then the scripture says this, that Jesus goes in front of the tomb and he weeps. He weeps not because Lazarus was, was dead, but he weeps because of the unbelief of the people. Then the Bible says this. He, he looks at that tomb that was closed and he, said, he says to them, roll away the stones. In other words, I need your participation to do supernatural things on the earth. I'm not going to do it alone. I need you to participate with me. He says, roll away the stones. Do your part. Do what you can do. You can roll away the stones. You may not be able to, to bring Lazarus back from the grave, but you can roll away the stones. He says, I'm going to allow you to participate in what I'm about to do this morning. What am I saying to you? There's something that God is going to allow you to participate with. He's going to allow you to participate with him, not because he cannot do it by himself, but because he wants you to understand that it is the glory of God, the goodness of God, the grace of God to do supernatural things on the earth. Amen. And Bible says, it said, he said, roll, roll, roll away the stones. They roll away the stones, and the Bible says, he said, Lazarus! Come forth. Scripture says he that was dead. Yeah. I said he that was dead. Yeah. That means dead things can hear. Uh -huh. yeah. I said that means dead things can hear. Because he had been dead. He had been good and dead for four days. I said he's been good and dead for four days. That means dead things can hear. The Bible says, the Bible says that you are, it says, it says the time is coming that the dead shall hear the word of the Lord and shall rise up. This was the prophecy. Let the last come forth. And the Bible says, he that was dead came forth, bound hands and foot. He looks at him and he says, he looks at him and he says, he looks at them and says, loose him and let him go. Now, now. And so when we come into the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we understand that there was nobody there to say, Jesus, come forth. All right. Uh -huh. I said there was nobody there to say, Jesus, come forth. Uh -huh. And so the Bible tells us that the same spirit that raised in, in Romans 8 verse 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave. First of all, you need to understand that, that God the Son, God the Spirit, and God the Father, they're all three in one. Mm 
Yes. Somebody say, how can you explain it? Well, I, I am a father, but I'm also a pastor, I'm also, and I'm also a manager. It's three functions in one. English language does not do enough justice to, 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 to show us the, uh, 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 the uh, duplicate, or to show us the, the, the uh, dividing line between uh, oneness and wholeness all at the same time. Are you following me? It's three in one. And so the Bible says the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God has raised Jesus from the dead. Uh -huh. Notice, this wasn't no accident whatsoever. This, this, this wasn't an accident. Yes. I said this wasn't an accident. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 tells us, unto us, unto us a child was born. Unto us a son was given. Come on. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, yeah, yeah. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of his government there shall be no end. This was not a, this was not a mistake. This was pre 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 it was prepared before the foundations of the earth. Yeah. Are you following me now? He didn't just he didn't just happen to stand show up and says, "Well, I'm just going to die." No, 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 no. This was this was way before the eons of time. I said way before the eons of time. God has already set it up that this would happen. Yeah. No, 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 no. We said I said that there had been there had been a lot of events between uh, between uh, Sunday him 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 riding into Jerusalem. And someday, him, him being revealed to the world that he, weren't in the, he was not in the tomb. Now, let me say this. They did, he did not roll away the stones to get, out of, to get out of the tomb. I said he did not roll away the stones to get out of the tomb. He rolled away the stones to let us come into what he had already done. Are you following me now? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, he didn't need a tomb to be rolled away for him to, get to, for him to rise up. He only opened the tomb so you have concrete evidence that sure enough, he's not back here. Because if, he, if the stone was still there, happenstance, you may say, well, he may have still been there. And now the, the dilemma would be, let's try to roll away this great stone. Because the Bible pauses and tells you that this stone was very great. It takes effort. I said it, 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 it takes a lot of effort. It would have taken a lot of effort to roll away that stone. But when grace shows up, what happens? Ooh, you, you ain't got to do no work. No, yeah. I said when grace shows up, all the work is already done for you. Man. I said when grace shows up, all the work is already done for you. Amen. Now, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Woo, okay. Sunday he's riding, Sunday he's riding into Jerusalem, and we're in Mark 11, and he's riding into Jerusalem, and they're crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Are you following me this morning? Uh -huh. Crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. The Bible tells us that Monday, Monday he shows up in the, into the temple, and, and, and as he shows up in the, into the temple Monday, uh, uh, he begins to, um, he, he, well, well, first of all, he, he that they look and they see the, the fig tree which he cursed. Are you following me? That happened Monday. Mm -hmm. He also goes into the temple Monday and the Bible says he, he, he clears the whole temple. Mm. He, he takes a whip. Now this is the second time he's done this. And, and I can just see the terror in the people when they saw him again. He did this first in John chapter 2 at the beginning of his ministry. At the end of his ministry, he's doing this again. He takes a whip and he flogs every, and, and he, 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 scatter, he scatters the whole place. He turns that place down and he says, my house shall be a house of prayer, but yeah. you've made it a day of thieves. Are you following me now? Then the Bible says that every day that, that week, every day that week, early in the morning, the people came to hear him speak. Uh -huh. They came to hear him speak. As he began to teach the word of God, he begins to tell them all the things that were happening in the parables and, 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 and begins to give them revelation as to the end in the days. Then the Bible tells us in um, Wednesday, 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 the Bible gives us an account as to, as to 
uh, 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 well, 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 some theologians tell us that also Tuesday was when was when Mary anointed his head. You remember that? Mary, Mary anointed his head, and that that is in, in, in John chapter twelve, John twelve. And when, when he goes to when he goes to Simon Simon the ex leper's house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you want no leper no more because if he was a leper, uh, nobody would have been in his home. Right. Are you Amen. following me now? Amen. So the ex leper's house. Now some theologians tell us that 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 ex leper was Judas Iscariot's daddy. I, 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 I don't have time to go search it out and study it. Because the Bible tells us that, that, that Judas, the son of Simon, you follow me then? Judas, the son of who? Of Simon. And Simon happens to be the leper. Are you follow me then? And so now, and so so now he goes to that, he goes to Simon the leper's house, and the Bible tells us that right there and then, now now this event is covered. Is covered in uh, in in in. It's also is covered in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Covers the same event. Uh -huh. Are you following me? Now, what what back what 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 baffles me is many times we get offended and we do crazy things because John tells us John chapter twelve tells us that when the woman Mary Mary uh, 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 the, 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 the 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 sister of Lazarus. When she poured that ointment on him, the Bible says it was worth a year's wage. A year's wage. How much do you make a year? That's how much she poured on Jesus. Wow. A year's wage. I'm not saying, not a month's wage. Yeah. I, you, you make $50,000 a year, that's how much it costs. You make $100,000 a year, that's how much it costs. You make $30,000 a year, that's how much it costs. A year's wage, she takes that and pours it on Jesus's head all the way down to his feet. I reckon so. I reckon so because she had been around Jesus and she knew the worth of God in her life. She knew the worth of Jesus in her life. She knew that the only reason why her brother is, was alive today was because Jesus showed up. Uh -huh. She knew the only reason why her life has changed for the better is because Jesus showed up. I, I want to talk to you this morning. Do you know the worth of God in your life? Do you know the worth of Jesus in your life? Oh, oh, oh let, let, let me say it. Let me say it another way. How much is he worth? How much is he worth? For some, 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 some folks, he ain't worth, he ain't worth but two dollars, and that's all they give him. Every, every service, they won't give him two dollars. For some, five dollars, that's, that's all they can go. For some, just twenty dollars, that's all they can go. I, I'm, I'm asking this morning, how much is he worth? How much is he worth? This woman takes, she takes, she takes a year's wage and throws it on Jesus' feet. A, a year's wage without blinking an eye. That's how much she, that's how much she honored him. Then the Bible tells us John, John gives us the, he, she, he gives us the individual. The other disciples, Mark says, Mark says, the disciple says. Matthew also says, the disciple says. John says, no, nah, you all not even put me in, in, that, in that category. I'm going to tell you exactly who it is. John tells us that it was, it was Judas Iscariot that spoke up. He speaks up and says, why is this race? It should have been sold and given to the poor. Judas was the one that said that. The Bible says, he says, John also tells us, now, you got to understand that John, whenever you want to talk, whenever you, you want to see that, that what happened uh, um, as, the, or as the week progresses, or the Passion Week, whenever you want to get a full picture as to the Passion Week, the week of the, the, the last week of the Lord Jesus Christ, go to John. Why? Because John was there at every, at, every, at every second and every moment John was there. He was there when they took him to Caiaphas, Caiaphas the high priest's uh, 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 courtyard. He was there. He was there when they took him to Pilate. He was there. He was there at the, at the foot of the cross when, when nobody was there. He was there. So when you want to have, have a clear picture as to what happened on the Passion Week, go to the book of John. John tells you and I that Judas Iscariot spoke up and said this. He says, he says why is this waste? 
Then he tells us, it's not me. He, he wasn't saying this because he cared about the, the poor. He said this because he was a thief. Yeah. And he had the money back. He wanted to get more. Because he knew that when more came in, he could pick it without nobody knowing that, he, that it was gone. What am I saying? If you got three apples and somebody take one, you know it's gone. Are you following me now? You got a thousand apples, somebody take one, you don't know it's gone. Amen. Well, because he wanted more to pick from. Are you following me this morning? No. No, 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 no. No. And so, Tuesday, uh, on Tuesday, he's anointed by Mary, the, 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 the sister of Lazarus. Hmm? Wednesday, Wednesday, what happened is it, Wednesday, some theologians tell us, was when Judas now goes to uh, the, 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 the Sanhedrin to betray Jesus. They, he said, what will you give me to betray him? Now, the reason why he had to go to them is because, uh, or the reason why they needed his help was because they knew that Jesus was popular among, among the people. Now, especially because the pilgrims had come from Galilee and they had come down, they had come down south, and you follow me now, to celebrate the Passover. So he had people that knew him. That's why when they began to cry, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord, those were the pilgrims that came from Galilee all down to Jerusalem. And you follow me this morning. Jerusalem swelled to almost five times the normal, the normal size. And so they said, we can't kill him during daylight. If we kill him during daylight, there's going to be an uproar. A riot will happen. And so we need the inside scoop. Somebody say inside scoop. Inside. We need inside information to go get him when nobody is there. That's why the Bible says, he said, I was dealing in the temple. How come you all didn't touch, 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 touch me then? They couldn't. Hmm. They could Because the Bible says, everybody came early in the morning to hear him talk to him. Mm-hmm. Are you following me this morning? That's why they needed they need Judas Iscariot. Judas, Judas Iscariot sold him, the Bible says, for 30 pieces of silver. Mm. 30 pieces of silver. It's not a whole lot of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's a lot, but it's not a whole lot. It was, it was the amount of money that it, 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 if somebody, if an, an animal killed your slave, then they would, they would pay you that amount. Not a whole lot of money. Are you following me then? No, 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 no. And so, uh, Wednesday, somebody said Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday was when Judas is kind of goes to betray Jesus. What baffles me is that hours later, hours later, he would he would renege from that renege from renege from that agreement. Now, 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 some 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 people say that the reason why Judas betrayed Jesus was because. Every time somebody wanted to um, uh, 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 kill Jesus, Jesus will always escape. Uh-huh. So he thought that, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get financial gain from this, and they'll try, they will try to take him, and he will escape. Now, that, that, that's not scripture, but just some theologians suggest that. And you follow me now. Be, be, be it as it may, he still betrayed Jesus. No, 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 no. No. Thursday, someone say Thursday. Thursday, they were having the Last Supper. The Last Supper or the Passover meal. The Passover meal is in it is in 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 in, uh, in celebration of what happened in Exodus when the Bible says the death angel came and it passed over the people of Israel because they had what? The, the blood. blood on the doorpost. Yes. Yes. And you follow me then. Yes. And so he uses that event to institute the new covenant. He uses the Passover to bring the Passover into what? The new covenant. Somebody said the new covenant. The new covenant. And so he says this. This is my body broken for you. And he takes the blood, he says, he takes the cup and says, this is my blood, what? Share for you. It was now the new covenant. Are you following me then? Uh-huh. 
Now they leave that event, and the Bible says they're going, they're going to the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives. It's where Gethsemane was. Gethsemane, the same place. The Bible says, as, he, as, he, as they were going there, they, have, they were having a conversation. And he says, he says, he says, and John, someone, there, there was a, um, uh, there's someone a back and forth with this because some, some scriptures locate that conversation uh, in, the, in the upper room experience. Some scriptures locate that conversation as they're going to the Mount of Olives. We don't know. However, and, and, and that, that difference doesn't bother me because I believe it is the uh, authenticity of the individual of giving that story and not a forced harmony. Are you following me this morning? And so John remembers it one way and Mark remem or Peter remembers it another way. Peter says, well, they are going, or Matthew, Peter and Matthew say that they were, they were going through, they were going to the, to the Mount of Olives, and he asked, and he, or he makes this statement, he says, he says, one of you are going to betray me this today. One of you are going to betray me. Uh, John says that they were reclining at the upper, upper room, and, they, and he makes the statement that one of you are going to, one of you is going to betray me. Hmm? And the Bible says that 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 that, 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 that he John leaned over and asked him, "Who is it? Who is the one that's going to betray you?" Hmm. He says, "The one that the one that dips the one that dips his hand in the pot with me." Hmm. And the Bible says that Judas dipped his hand right then and then, and he, he looked at Judas and he says, "He says, friend, what you do, what you're going to do, go do quickly." Yeah. Are you following me now? Now the scripture says this that they did not they did not know fully what it meant. You better believe they didn't know fully what it meant. Because Peter would have cut his head off right then then. I said, you better believe they didn't know fully what he meant. Are you following me now? Because the scripture says they thought that he was going to go give money or give or, or feed the poor. Uh -huh. That's what they thought. Why? Because he did it all the time. He did it all the time. You know, go go over there and go go feed that go feed that family. So he takes the money back. He goes there, feeds them, feed them, and feed him. Mm -hmm. I say he feed them and he feed him all at the same time. Are you following me now? Uh -huh. This happened for almost three years. And notice, Jesus didn't say a word. Yeah. Why? Because I believe that he was trying to minister to Jesus. Yeah. Every conversation, every every message was geared. To us trying to penetrate his heart. Because he could have walked away at any time that he wanted to. This wasn't a mechanical thing. In other words, it, even though it was predestined, it was in the mind of God, it did not mean that Judas still had to do it. Judas had a choice. Are you following me now? The only reason why he knew it was because he was God of my sin. That's the only reason why he knew it. He already knows the decision you're going to make before you make the decision. He knows the motive why you're making the decision before you make that decision. Are you following me this morning? He is God. And so you can't, you can you, you can fool somebody so many times, but you can't fool God none of the time. He knows the intent of your heart. Are you following me this morning? And so the Bible says Judas, Judas would, would, would now, would now, Beat, would now go. He would. He would. He would. He would, he would go and and, and 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 cut a deal to betray Jesus. And as they were in, in that that place called Gethsemane, he takes Peter, James, and John. Goes to a, a, a stone throw, and he falls on his knees and he begins to pray. He begins to pray not because. Not because he was not, not because he was ungodly, but he began to pray because he needed to connect with God. Mm -hmm. I pray not because I'm ungodly, but I pray because I need, I need a touch of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he prayed so much that sweat, that the blood came out of his pores like sweat. Ooh, it was so much pressure on him that he needed, he needed to, he needed to, he needed to aspire, he needed to release some weight. I'm asking you, have you prayed? You talk to anybody. Have you prayed? You say, Pastor, I got so much stress on me. I'm asking you, have you prayed? Pastor, I got so much, I got so much pressure on me. I'm asking you, have you prayed? Hmm. 
when you pray, what happens? You release the weight. You release the pressure. You release the anxiety. You release the fear. You release the worry. You, are you following? When you pray, I'm asking you, have you prayed? Look at your neighbor and ask him, have you prayed? 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 You've got to pray. You've got to pray. You've got to pray. Men always ought to pray and not faint. Bible said Jesus falls on his knees and he prayed. He says, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass away from me. Other words, other words, is there another way we can do this? That's why when the Bible says that he was tempted by Satan, he really was. When the Bible, you follow me, he really was. Because now this is pressure on his flesh. And he said, Father, is there any other way that this can happen? Any other way? Can, 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 we, can we bypass this? Can we, can we circumvent this? Can we do something different? But the Bible says he did it three times. Did it three times. But guess what? Scripture really doesn't tell us that Jesus says that, they ain't, that God says there ain't no other way. But when he got up, he accepted the will of God. I said, when he got up, he accepted the will of God. Mm -hmm. You follow me now? Otherwise, I'm going to accept the will of God. Sometimes you may not even hear anything, but you got, you got to be, be woman enough or man enough just to accept the will of God. Yeah. God, I'm going, to accept the, I'm going to accept this in my life. Paul says this way. Paul says this way. He says, he says three times I, I prayed to the Lord to remove the thorn in my flesh. And the Bible says, he says, he heard, he says, he says, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. In your weakness, I'm made per perfected. Are you following me now? Yeah. Other words, so some things God is not going to totally deliver you from. Mm -hmm. I know that don't sound right. I, 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 I know you, you like this, you know, God's going to make a way, a, a way that seems to be no way. But there's something God's not going to deliver you from. I knew that Paul had to, had to wrestle with the thorn in his flesh for years. Jesus had to go to the cross. Now, now, the Bible says this. It says, it says, it says, it says this. They did not come get, they, they now come to Gethsemane and they pick him up. The, the, the temple police were there. The soldiers, the Roman soldiers were there. And also the San Sanhedrin were there. The elders were there. They came and they picked him up from where he was. The Bible says when they came to where he is, he asked them, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said this, I am he. The Bible says when he said, I am he, they all fell down backwards. Yeah. <laughs> That's the power this man had. Yeah. Are you following me now? Then the Bible says that Peter reached, reached out his sword and cut some man's ear off. Jesus looks at Peter and says, put it away. Put that away. He takes the man's ears off of the floor. Puts it back on his ears. That's enough for you to, for you to, for you to serve God for the rest of your days. That's enough for you to say, well, I, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we not, we not arresting this guy. However, because it was demonically influenced, they couldn't help it. They saw that miracle and they ignored that miracle. They saw what Jesus did and they ignored what Jesus did. The truth is, the truth is, the truth is that this this problem, this this uh, this um this um this confrontation had been from eons from the beginning of days. This wasn't a confrontation between the Sadducees and the Pharisees and Jesus. This was a confrontation between God and, and Lucifer eons and eons before this event. The Bible says this, and let's, let's go to, let's go to uh, um, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3. And let's go to verse. I want you to see that this had been Confrontation between the enemy and uh, and Adam, which is the, the first the first Jesus or the first Adam and God. Notice, no, no, notice what notice 
Notice what it says in, in, in Genesis 3 and verse 15. This is after the, the man had done um, had eaten of the fruit that God told him not to eat, that if he eats the fruit, that he was going to die. You remember that? Right, this is after the event. And, and notice, notice what happens in verse 15. It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between her seed and what? B -b -b between thy seed and what? And her seed. It says, it shall bruise thy heel, and thou shalt do what? Bruise is what? His heel. Let me read this again. Let me read it again. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, there we go, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It shall bruise thy head. In other words, another, another translation says this way, he shall crush your head, but you're going to bruise his heel. The bruising of the heel is what we find ourselves in right now. Isaiah tells us more specifically, Isaiah tells us more specifically uh, in, uh, in, Isaiah, in, in Isaiah 53, it gives us the event as to what's happening here. Are you following me now? Now, now, now. And so we see that this problem had been before the foundation of the earth or eons and eons ago. Now, go to second, go to, um, Go to Second Corinthians. I want you to see this. I want you. I want to turn to a couple of scriptures here, so you see, you get a couple of um, context as to what I'm saying. Because this is the problem. Second Corinthians, uh, chapter four, and let's look at verse four. Hallelujah! Praise the name of Jesus. Notice what it says in 2 Corinthians 4. Because what happened is when that event happened, Satan became the god of this world. Are you following me there? When Adam, when Adam ate of the tree, he gave the authority as the god of this world over to Satan. And Satan now became a lordship or ruler over the world. And so what it says. So, so see what it says. It says, in whom the god of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is what the image of God should do what? To shine unto them. Otherwise, the God of this world became Satan and Lucifer because he took the authority from that particular event. He took the authority from man. Why? Because a man was given dominion over the earth. Yeah. Are you following me now? No. No. And so, I'm, I'm going to talk to you very, very quickly. I'm going to give you seven Ps. Seven Ps. Seven Ps. Very quickly. Very quickly. And I'm done. Seven quick Ps. Seven Ps. Number one is the problem. The problem. The problem. Let's go to uh, Romans 5. Romans 5 verse 14. The problem. Somebody say the problem. the problem. The problem. Romans 5, verse 14. See what the Bible says. It says this. Well, let me start in verse 12. Romans 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. When Adam sinned, sin, when Adam sinned, then sin entered into the world into the world by one Adam. One man. One act. Notice what it says. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed unto all men that all have sinned. Hmm? All have sinned because of Adam. Then he goes on to say, For unto for unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned. From Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that is to come. Otherwise, Adam was the figure of Jesus that was to come. 
He was the first Jesus. Or we call Jesus, rather, the second Adam. Are you following me now? He was the son of God. But because he fell, he sinned, death reigned. Now you can see why you don't have to tell a child uh, uh, to do wrong. Wrongness is inevitably embedded on the inside of them. They are going to do wrong. You got to teach them to do right. The Bible says, David says, it says, in sin that my mother conceived me. Are you following me then? As pretty as they are, as precious as they are, they grow up talking about mine and me and no. Are you following me then? And you got to teach them to do right. Are you following me? Why? Because sin reigned from Adam all the way down. Sin reigned. That's what the problem. Yeah. Number two, the plan. Uh, I, the plan, because I, I, I don't have enough time to. I, we got several scriptures, but, but but let's go. The plan. Ephesians one verse four. The plan. Somebody that say the plan. The plan. The plan. The plan. There was a problem. The problem was Adam. Adam messed it up. Adam fell. But 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 but, but the Bible says the Bible says it, that this plan was before the foundations of the earth. Adam, uh, 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 Ephesians 4, Ephesians 1 verse 4, excuse me, Ephesians 4 verse, Ephesians 4 and verse, and, and, Ephesians 1 verse 4, there we go, according as it had chosen, according as he has chosen us in him, what, before the foundations of the world, that we should be what, holy, and without blame before him, where? In love, having predestined or predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus to himself, according to what the good pleasure of his will. To the promise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had he had he made us accepted where? In the beloved. Notice what, what happened. The plan was where? Before the foundation of the earth. So when Jesus was talking in Caesarea Philippi, and when he said this, when he said, when he said, when he says, I'm gonna die, guys, and three days I'm gonna get up. He wasn't talking, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't just informing them, or he wasn't saying that because he just got that revelation. He had already had the revelation before the foundation of the earth. Otherwise, this already happened eons and eons before this event. He said he is simply just carrying, he's simply just fulfilling what had already been prophesied. That's why the Bible would say several times, this was done, that it might be what? Fulfilled that which was prophesied by Jeremiah or by Isaiah. Are you following? Or Zechariah. Are you following me now? He was only walking out what the word had already proclaimed. I said he was only working out what the word had already proclaimed. No, 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 no. Somebody say, somebody say, the problem. The problem. The, problem. the, plan. the plan. The plan. The plan. Now, now I got several scriptures there, but but, but I got I gotta move on. You can go to you can go to Romans, Romans 16. Let's go to Romans 16, verse 25 and 26. Let's, let's, let's look at that. Because I, I got another, I got a few more to give you. Romans 16, verse 25. Verse 25 and 20 and 26. Notice what the Bible says. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You all get anything out of this? Yeah. The problem. Other words, when Jesus showed up and there was so much contention with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, it didn't just stop there. And the truth is, they couldn't help it. They couldn't help that they wanted to kill an innocent man. Even though Pilate wanted to free him. They couldn't help it. They couldn't help that they were jealous of the fact that, that everybody was crying out to him with, with that Hillel song saying Hosanna. And now, for this particular event, they were all looking at one man. Understand this, that in, 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 in Matthew 11, I'm sorry, in Mark 11, when they were crying out Hosanna, they did that every single year, the Passover, they did that every single year. The difference about this year is now that they are crying out to one man. One man is getting the praise. And so they looked at him and said, what are you doing? Tell him to shut up. 
Tell them to keep quiet. The Bible says he said this to them. If they, if they keep quiet at such a time as this, the rocks will cry out. In other words, inanimate things will begin to shout Hosanna because this is the time that they ought to do it. And you follow me this morning. Amen. And so they couldn't, they couldn't help the fact that they took up innocent men to Pilate. He first of all goes to 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 to, to uh, 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 Aeneas. Then he goes to Caiaphas. The Aeneas and Caiaphas happens to be they happen to be the high priest at that particular event. The high priest at this time was not the high priest that you and I understand in the in the Old Testament. Aaron and, and, and the lineage of Aaron, Aaron. That's not this high priest. The high priest of this time were were were, were given to the highest bidder. The Romans would the Romans would, would, would sell this office so that the high priest now had authority or jurisdiction over the temple. And so whatever was sold or bought in the temple was closed into their pocket. That's why when Jesus to overchange, overturn the money changes and the doves in the temple, they were ex they were they were they were infuriated and they begin to plot how they're gonna kill him. Why? Because he was messing with their money. Don't mess with people's money. Now. <laughs> uh, are you following me now? Even Christians will cut you when you mess with their money. I, I said, I said, even Christians will cut you when you mess with their money. Ain't that true? Yeah, you know it's true. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, so tomorrow, 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 you don't work 40 hours and you say, Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You better give me my jacket. Praise the Lord. <laughs> are you, so because he messed with the money, they were trying to kill him. That's what's going on now. Are you following me now? Yeah. And so even though they took him from Caiaphas' house and they took him to Pilate, the Bible says Pilate was looking at them and for three, three occasions, Pilate says this, you are, he says, I find that three occasions in John, he tells you, he says, I find this man innocent. Innocent. But because this was, this was, prepared before the foundations of the earth, they could help themselves. And so they asked for a murderer uh, 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 Barnabas. Barnabas, his name means the son of the father. That's what his name is. Barnabas. They killed the son of the father to save the son of a father. Are you following me this morning? Now, The Bible says this. The Bible says. The Bible says. Uh, the Bible says. I got to hurry. The Bible says. And so they, they take him, and they said they, they they take him to Pilate, and they said you got to crucify him. The reason why they wanted to him to crucify, they wanted him crucified. Understand this: they could have killed him any time they wanted. Any time they wanted, they could have killed him. They could have stoned him to death. What, what held their hands was because they wanted the curse attached to him. Because in Deuteronomy 23, verse 22, he says, Curse is anyone that hangs on the tree. So they wanted the curse attached to Jesus. And so they needed the permission of the Romans to execute or to crucify him. They understand this. This is not about dying. They needed, they needed the attachment of the curse on him. And he also needed to bear the curse of the whole world. Amen. And you follow me now? Yeah. Because they could have stoned him any time they wanted to. Yeah. They could have stoned him. Are you following me now? But because biblically, if they had done that, then all the prophecy would have never been fulfilled. And so, and so, like a puppet, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were being channeled by the enemy. To crucify him and to attach the curse on him. That's why the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, if they had known it, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Correct. They did not know what was going on. Did not know what they were doing. Are you following me this morning? No, 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 no. Well, what I say? Go, Romans, Romans, Romans 16. Romans 16. I said Romans 16. Then I, hallelujah, glory be to God. They did not know this. If they had known this, what happens? They would never have crucified the Lord, crucified the Lord of glory. 
No, 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 no. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, that was First Corinthians 2 and verse 8, excuse me. First Corinthians 2 verse 8. Now, First Corinthians, uh, Romans, 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 uh, Romans 16 and verse 45. See what it says here. See what it says here. It says, now to him that is that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret, what? Since the world began, but made, but but but, but made now, but now is made manifest. And by the scripture of the prophets, according to the commandments, what of the of the what of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. But notice what it says. It says it says it was kept secret. Kept secret. Shh! Don't say nothing. It was kept secret. Nobody knew it. Angels didn't know. It. Nobody knew it was kept secret before the foundations of the earth. Why? Because, because this had to happen. Mm -hmm. Are you following me now? Yeah. He had to go. He had to go on the cross. And so the Bible says this. The Bible says. The Bible says. The Bible says. And so they took an innocent man and they crucified this innocent man. An innocent man. Now, crucifixion, crucifixion was invented by the Phoenicians. Crucifixion. It was perfected by the Romans. Crucifixion was okay. Crucifixion was given almost to put people in line. Otherwise, you hand somebody up and you show them to everybody and let them know you are you you step out of line you gonna be you gonna you gonna you gonna you gonna suffer the same thing mm -hmm. so it, it was it was a, a method of intimidation mm -hmm. it was a method to, to to control the people it was a method to keep people in bondage mm -hmm. ain't it funny how the, the method that they thought was going to keep people in bondage was that method that liberated the whole world? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What they thought, what they, what they, what they thought was gonna, what they thought was gonna, what, what they thought was gonna stop a message, was what triggered the message. Thank you, Are you following with me now? What they thought was gonna stop on a rusty hill, on the backside of Gethsemane, on the backside. Of the place of the skull, what they thought was going to stop there, went from there and went to the whole world. Matter of fact, Jesus talking about Mary as she anointed him says this: "What she has done, what she has done, is going to be said to the way the whole world with no internet, with no with no with, with, with no transportation, with no airplane." Yeah. Are you following? With no car, with no vehicle. Mm -hmm. This carpenter almost 2,000 years ago recognized that what, what was happening at that event. Her anointing his head was going to be preached to the whole world. Thank you, Lord. The whole world. Hmm? That's how big your God sees. He sees you going global. But you keep trying to be local. And you follow me now. He keeps, he sees you going bigger and higher. But you keep trying, you keep trying to stay where you are. And you follow me now. And so this redemptive plan was given to us, or it was established to us as a secret, but a revelation to us in the latter time. No. Let me give you this couple on this couple on. I got to close. I got to close. Okay, okay. Number number one was one, number one, number one was the was the problem. Number two was the plan. Number three was the, the prophecy. The prophecy. The prophecy. Galatia, uh, um, uh, uh, I, Isaiah, I, Isaiah uh, nine and six. 
talks about the son, the son was given. Number, number, number four was Passover. That's what they were celebrating, the Passover meal. Do you follow me? Number five, number five was the passion. The passion, the passion, the passion. That, that's what happened. That's what you call the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ as those Roman, those Roman soldiers begin to take their frustration out on Jesus. You got to understand, they hated each other. The Jews hated the Romans, the Romans hated the Jews. And so for them to, for them to bring one of their own and put it right on the do doorstep to be tortured by the Romans, they had, they, they had a slow day. They took all the frustration because they called them infidels. They took all the frustration that they ever received from a Jew and they placed it on Jesus' back. And the Bible tells us that he, they took, they took, they flogged him. John tells us that, that it was, it was, it was a, 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 a strap and it tells us they have things attached to those, stra those straps. They flogged him. And flogging what happens is what was they would tie a man and make almost a U shape out of the man. Or let me say this, an N, a small N shape. Are you following me now? That his back was bared up and everything else going back. Almost an N shape. And they flogged him as, as they flogged him, eye sockets comes out. Flesh are being ripped open. Are you following me? As they flogged him. But he took all that beating. Now, they, they did not only beat him, and I got the clothes. They did not only beat him and beat his body down. They also beat, beat him down psychologically. Psychologically. Talking about you, you, you're supposed to be the king of the Jews. And they mocked him. What am I saying? I'm saying God has not come. He has not only come to redeem you, your body, but also your mind. The Bible says he will keep him at perfect peace whose mind is stained on him. It's amazing many times we receive healing for our bodies, but we fail to receive the same healing for our mind. Mental problem, mental, mental yeah. situation. I'm saying Jesus Christ has come to deliver you and I for mental problems. Yeah. Mental you. pain. And you follow me this morning? Yeah. Mentals, things that are happening on the inside of you. And he took all of that and he buried it on the cross. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And the Bible says this, as he hung on that cross, the Bible says that the S, the S-U-N, which is the sun, refused to shine for three hours because the S-O-N was on the cross. Woo. Darkness was all around you, Jerusalem that day. Nobody could understand. It was Exodus being replayed. Exodus, when the Bible says they couldn't see their hand, they couldn't see that the, the, their hand in front of their face because it was so much darkness in that place. That's what's going on here. And the Bible says as it stretched on that cross, he began to cry out, Father, Father, Psalm 22, why have you forsaken me? And the scripture says this. And at that moment, he says, to test a lie. To test a lie means it is finished. He says, it is finished. And the Bible says, he gave up the ghost. Notice what it's notice what it notice what he tells Pilate. Pilate says, Why are you not talking to me? Pilate says, Why are you not speaking to me? Matter of fact, the Bible says when he held in his mouth, Pilate was amazed that this much ridicule would be on one man, and he did not—he did not even open his mouth. The problem is, the problem is what Pilate fails to understand that if he opened his mouth, he could have created whatever he needed to create. That's right. And the Bible says this. Pilate says, why are you not talking to me? Pilate says, talk to me. Don't you know I have the power to release you? The Bible says, Jesus looks at him and says, you have no power to release me. I have the power to, I have the power to lay my life down and I have the power to pick it back up again. That's how bad I am. I control when I die and I control when I'm going to get back up again. I, you, 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 I said, he said, I control when I die, and I control when I pick this back up again. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this, that he looked, he said, that's the lie. Otherwise, it is finished. The, 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 the Greek is, it's paid in full. I said, it's paid in full. 
Your problem is paid in full. You, your sickness Lord. is paid in full. Thank you, Lord. Your heartache is paid in full. Whatever is wrong in your life, Jesus says it's paid in full. To test a lie, it is paid in full. Thank you, Lord. Paid in full. And the Bible says he gave up the ghost. No man takes my life. I give it up. He, 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 he gave up the ghost. And the scripture tells us that every, the, 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 the whole of Jerusalem was a shambles. An earthquake began to hit that place like that, that they'd never seen before. The Bible says that the, the, the veil in the temple ripped from top to bottom. Not from bottom to top. From top to bottom. It rips all the way down. Saying the veil has been opened. Now man can come fully to God. Are you following me now? Then the Bible tells us, tells you and I, that early Sunday morning. Yes. Now what happened between him giving up the ghost and him and on Sunday morning? The scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 that he that he goes into the lower part of the earth. He preached, he preached the gospel to the angels and he led captivity captives and he gave gifts to men. Although Jesus Christ was still preaching. They thought that he was going to come to hell bound. He came to hell saying, Folks, I'm here! Folks, I'm here! The king of kings, I'm here! And he came preaching the word of the king. And the Bible says, we were, we, were still, we were still on earth looking, wondering, imagining, plotting. People were plotting, saying, we're going to have to hold the two. We'll send soldiers over there because we don't want, we don't want them to come steal the body. Because, because, because they said that he was going to get up again. And so they went and put soldiers in the tomb to keep the sun out. They, 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 took, uh, they, took, they took a rock and they put a ro the rock in a, into the rock. The Bible calls it the rock of ages. Uh, the, the rock, the, the, the rock, the, the rock that, that, that the people dread as they walked from, 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 from Egypt to the promised land. That rock was in a rock. But that rock could hold what was in the rock. And so the Bible tells you and I that early Sunday morning. Thank you, Jesus. Early. early Sunday morning. While it was yet dawn, mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene and Salome went to the tomb uh, to see about anointing Jesus because they figured that the men. So, uh, Joseph of Arachimia and also Nicodemus did not do a good job. So they wanted to finish the job that they had started on the day before. Uh, but when, when, they, when, they, when they went there, they found out the tomb was already bust open. Mm. Nobody was in the tomb. And the angel looks at them and said this, Why are you looking? Why are you looking? For the living among the dead. He is not here. Matter of fact, when they were going there, when they were going, they began to consider and they began to say, they began to ask themselves the question, who is going to roll away the stone? They were, I, I want to commend these women because they did not allow the question that they had to limit their progress. Mm -hmm. Many times we allow the question that we have to limit our movement. They were moving, but they still had questions. They were going, but they still had questions. Uh -huh. They did not figure it all out yet, but they still asked, had questions. I'm here to talk to you this morning about questions that don't even matter. You ask asking questions, and if you just keep moving, those questions will, will not even matter. I said, you're asking questions, but if you just keep doing, those questions will not even matter. You ask a question, but if you just keep hearing and listening to the Father, those questions will not even matter. I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ is alive and well.
The Bible says, he says, go to, go to Galilee and I will appear before my, 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 my disciples in Galilee. They go to Galilee and the Bible says, he says this, as he, as he begins to ascend back up to heaven, he says, I've got all power in my hand. He says, I've got all power in my hand. He says, I've got all power in my hand and I'm giving it all to you. Go ye and you make disciples. Did you all receive that today? Amen. Somebody stand to your feet and give God some praise in this house. Yeah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. He says, you go ye and you make disciples. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so if you are here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life and you've heard about Easter, you you know about Easter. You you you, be, you, you know about the, the com commercialism about Easter. But but I want to talk to you this morning. Do, do you know? Do, do you know? Do you do you know about Jesus Christ? Do you know? Do you know about what? Do you know about what 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 what, what, what is all what this is all about? Do you know about about Jesus? Why Jesus came? Why he was resurrected? I'm here to share with you tonight. But the reason why Jesus came, he says, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You hear today, you say, Pastor, I'm not, I'm not a good person. I don't know God, and I'm, I'm not a good person. Or you may say, well, Pastor, I'm an okay person. But I don't know Jesus as the Lord, as a personal, as my personal Savior. I want to talk to you today. The reason why we're celebrating this resurrection service is because Jesus Christ died for you and my, me. There are no perfect people in the Bible. Peter denied that he knew the Lord three times. Mary Magdalene, the Bible says that Jesus cast out seven devils out of her. There are no perfect people in the Bible. The, the, the Bible says how Thomas would, would, would doubt that Jesus even rose from the grave. There are no perfect people in the Bible. John, the one that writes about this event, the Bible tells us that this John was impatient. And the Bible calls him the son of Thomas. He was going to rain down fire at the city of Samaria. No perfect people in the Bible. But the Bible says this. All of sin have come short of the glory of God. It says the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. Yes, the gift of God is eternal life. What am I saying to you this morning? The reason why Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about relationship. I'm here for you this morning. I preached all that message just to get to this point. For the Spirit of God to begin to woo you. If you don't know, or if you've not asked Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, you say, Pastor, I don't think I've ever done that, then you probably have never. But you can do that today. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things are made new. If you're tired of if you're tired of sick of being sick and tired, you you're tired of your old self, of you're doing your old things. I'm not saying that he will give you a brand new hand or brand new feet, but I'm saying that he'll give you a brand new life. I'm saying that your heart will begin to desire new things. I'm saying that he'll begin to do amazing things in your life as you would yield to him and listen to him this morning. If you are not saved, if you have not asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, I want to pray with you. Or if you're backslidden, you've you once done this, but right now you know in your in your hearts of heart that you're not living for God. God sent me here this morning to talk to you this morning. Yeah, He knew you would be here this morning. Now I will preach this message that would so much somehow arrest you and you'll give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to do that today, I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. I make you my Savior. I make you my Redeemer. 
Satan, I renounce you and all your ways. Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. I put you first. Everything I do is because of you. In Jesus' name, I yield my desires to your desires. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe if you pray that simple prayer that you became born again. God bless you. Write on the comments. Let somebody know that you got saved today because we want to pray with you and pray for you and even connect with you on a personal level. In Jesus' name, somebody give God praise and give God glory in this house. Come on, give God praise and give God glory in this house. Amen, amen. Is that the best you Come on. Come on, give God praise in the house. Amen, amen. Praise God. Those of us online, God bless you. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Real quickly, you may be seated. We're going to receive our offering. Amen, amen. You want to sow into the kingdom of God, what God is doing here at Destiny Christian Center, soon to be Creedence Church. Amen, amen. We are believing for supernatural things to continue to happen in this place. Amen. Praise God. You want to sow your seed? Go ahead, right uh, to uh, Destiny Christian Center. Amen. Write on that check. If you are online, go to destinysouth.org. Destinysouth.org. It is a secure giving. Amen. Go ahead and do that. We are believing God for all that he keeps doing in each and every one of our lives. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Those that want to soak into the vision Go ahead and write under the vision. Amen. I believe the Lord will bless you for it. Amen. As you give, press down, good measure. Run it over, man, and give it to your bosom. The Bible says you give sparingly, you reap sparingly. You give bountifully, you also want to be bountiful. Amen. We believe in being good givers, bountiful givers. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. How much is he worth to you? To one woman he was worth almost a, wedge, a, a year's wage. How much is he worth to you? Amen. He simply says, bring your tithe and your offering into the storehouse. Matter of fact, he, he, he lets you he lets you off a bit. He says, just bring 10% as your tithe. Whatever, whatever above that is your offering. Amen. He let you off. What a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Amazing grace. Amazing love. What a blessing. Amazing love. What a blessing. Amen. All right. Very quickly, if you're ready to give, go ahead and stand to your feet. Hallelujah.
Scripture does say, give it, it shall be given to us. Good measure, fresh down, shake it together, run it over. Shall men give it to our bosom. We give in faith and we receive in faith. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. And so you'll see that you, as you leave today, those of us online, God bless you. Good to have you. Thank you for coming into the presence of God and all that you keep doing. You are helping to make it happen. Praise God for you. And we'll see you soon. In Jesus' name, God bless you.